Okay, you all actually have to subscribe. I'm doing this for a second time. Hello, Emmett Ryan here, and it is great to be back with you here again on Ball in Europe. And as my intro there, my cold open, sorry, suggested, yeah, this is our second time recording this video. Uh, so I recorded this about an hour, an hour and a half before doing this version now, and it corrupted, so we're going again. But as the title suggests, it is a video breaking down the roster of Zalgiris. We had a poll last week. It was Zalgiris versus Vezda versus Fenner. Whichever one of those came out on top was going to be the one we did today, which is Wednesday. We do videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We will be doing a Zvezda and Fenerbahce video for each of them. We haven't decided the order yet because we're going to do a little bit of fun for that to decide which one goes first. But Zalgiris won the poll. They're going today. We're going to get to it right now, but before we get to it, please subscribe, especially given I've gone through the extra effort to do this twice, folks. Come on. It always helps. Share, comment, tell your friends. You know the story. Let's get to it. So there's a lot to get to here, so I have got notes here in my hand in front of me, so I'm going to be looking down at these quite a bit during the video. We're starting out, as you can tell from the little clip title there, with the Int, who's arrived. So the full list is Tyrone Wallace, Brian Dunstan, Sylvain Francisco, Alan Smolagic, Matt Mitchell, Ignis Brazdeskis, and D Davidus uh, Sirvidis. Uh, sorry, I got his name wrong several times in the previous recording as well. Sirvidis. I'm, I should be better at this with Baltic names right now. I'm so sorry. We're not going through all of them, but don't worry. We are going along on this video, so we are going to go through a lot of them. So we're going to start off with Bryant Dunstan. Dude's 38. 38 years old, still going. Uh, 38 years old, still going also means usage management. You do not want to run this guy too hard. If you don't overwork him, he's got a lot of good basketball left in him. You can squeeze that, whatever's left there, out of him this season. But only if you're smart. Like, you run Bryant Dunstan too heavy too early. Like, we know what he's done. He's won two Euro Leagues. He's won the best defender a couple of times. He's been playing at this level for a very long time. He knows the drill. He has a very high basketball IQ. He has been there, done that. He has played at various different levels, various different uh, roles as a five. And he knows what it takes to deliver. Trust his IQ. And like I say with all players, don't trust what they're saying about how much they need to play. Unless Brian Dunstan is actually being smart here, which not all most players are. And saying, actually, it's best to not overrun me. Don't overrun him. He's 38. You're going to have to be very smart with the Ross rotation. There's going to be Barutas doing some work there, obviously. But also another guy we're going to get to in a small second. But be smart with Brian Dunstan. You'll get what you need out of him. Sylvan Francisco. I mean, this just feels like a classic Zalgiris and or Andrea Trincari situation of a player waiting for a situation to truly blossom into what he can do at this level. Uh, it's just a way to bloom dub. Like, he had a really good assist-to-turnover ratio at Bayern, despite, you know, his fairly low usage as a player overall. And I just think, you know, we're just waiting to see him take that, that step where he can be a, a feature player uh, uh, with the ball in hand. And I think, obviously, in this situation, he should be that feature player ball in hand. And he's like that assist turnover ratio is really important to me because at this level, EuroLeague, you need a guy who can create at the point guard position, don't get me wrong, but you also, especially when going up against those super teams, those really loaded rosters, you've got to have a guy who's going to protect that rock too. Like the the Panathinaikos, the Real Madrid, the Olympiacos of this world, they want to run at you. They want to create fast break opportunities. They want to make it harder for you to match them for possessions and all that. Reducing turnovers, great for that. Which leads us nicely to Alan Smalagic, who, of course, uh, ex-partisan man, and uh, he is going to have to do a lot of work. He's a lot younger than he looks, as I always point out. Like, you know, maybe I'm just cruel because, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a youthful 43. Uh, but uh, Alan Smalagic, like, he's going to be made to work hard because he's going to be doing work at the four and the five for my money. And... Uh, you know, he's a guy who likes to work hard, so it's just as well you signed him, because if you're signing Brian Dunstan, you're going to need someone who can do some heavy minutes, filling in more than one role, I imagine, and that's what Alan Smolagic does. So, I like the signing, he's just a he's just a good pick. That's that's all I really have to say about that, like, I like the signing of Alan Smolagic. And so that brings us to the prodigal son, Ignas Brazdeikis. I mean... He, we saw him there before, he went to Olympiacos, didn't work out, now he's back. And there's the old goose hitting saying, you know, you never go back. Uh, on, you know, the one time goose hitting did go back, like the, the situation had changed so radically that he was convinced to, to, you know, to give it a go. The situation has changed radically, I suppose, in one respect, now it's, it's you know, Strinkieri in charge. 
but at the same time, it's still a big ask, like, after one season away to come back and what are you going to do? Like, for me, I think he's going to be motivated, but we're going to get more into his motivation in a, in a, minute, in a few minutes. Uh, actually, quite a, quite a few minutes, because Zalgiris fans have all asked me to go long on this video, so I am delivering. You are getting a long video, folks. Uh, at least I hope so, assuming this doesn't corrupt a second time. Uh, so, Ignis Brasdikis... We're going to talk a bit more about you a bit later on, but generally speaking, good sighting. We know what he can do in a, in a green uniform. He's got to be fine. Tyrone Wallace, Tyrone Wallace. Uh, I say Tyrone. Some people say Tyrone. I, you know, I, whatever way uh, Tyrone pronounces it, I'm cool with that, just to be clear. I'm thinking of the county the name comes from, uh, which is uh, Tyrone, which is the uh, land of Owen, in case you're wondering where the name comes from. Uh, it's a county that Dublin JA have a lot of rivalries with and don't particularly like, to be honest. Uh, but we beat them more often than we lose to them, so that's grand. Uh, so anyway, getting back on point, Ty Tyrone Wallace. He did, he had heavy minutes. And good, not great, but still good, very good, shooting in Euro Cup last year. And so that's nice. The worrying part was he was a bit turnover prone, like very even almost on the assist turnover ratio, which is not what you want to see for a guy who is creating quite a lot of assists because it means he's also giving up quite a few turnovers. And I think that's a big, big question mark around how Wallace is going to be used here because he's going to have to be more conservative with the ball in hand for a team that needs to also take some risks, bizarrely, uh, if if he's going to succeed. So that, for me, that's the big question over, over Wallace. The turnover-prone nature of him last season, what's it going to translate to this season? And so that's who's come, but who's gone? So the outs, I'll again go through them reasonably quickly. Uh, Cavarius Harris, Dimitri Rivers, Keenan Evans, Roland Smith, Edmund Sumner, Nidas Montvilla, Lavernicia San Lucas Unis as well are both gone. We're not going through all of them again. We're going again, just pick uh, the ones that stood out to me as the ones that are relevant in their departure. And the obvious one, the obvious big loss here is Keenan Evans. I mean, the guy's just a star. <laughs> we saw him ball out for Zalgiris so often last season. Like, he's got all the tools, like, you know, in, as an offensive player, a, a shooting, creating, uh, work rate, quickness. You know, the, the guy's just going to do it for you uh, uh, offensively. And the big surprise for me with Keenan wasn't that he left Zalgiris. Like, players in that situation, the contracts come up, stuff happens, and they're going to get a better offer somewhere else. I just thought the offer he got from Olympiacos, if what Sport24 in Greece have reported is true, is a bit lower than I expected. Now, when I talk about money in basketball, I am not talking about the money that me or most of you earn, or, or actually, no, sorry, get paid, because we all obviously should earn far more than we do for the work we already do, but we mostly get paid less than a top-tier EuroLeague basketball player. I think that's a reasonable thing to say. And so, for the level of player and, you know, level of target demand for Keenan Evans, I'm surprised it's only a half a million contract being reported by Sport24 for the year. I just, I thought it'd be higher six digits. Like, I thought it'd be a lot closer to the million than this. So, bit of a surprise there, but anyway, yeah, he's a loss because, you know, he, he did so much uh, for Zalgiris on the court. We saw that. Obviously, he's the injury to deal with, but still. Hayes, I like Cavarius Hayes for one reason above all else, efficiency. Like, really, really, really good shooting stats. Uh, you know, didn't do a lot in terms of creating, granted, but also didn't give up the ball very much either. So, you know, you knew what you were getting with him and you knew it was going to be quality. Like, if you gave him the ball, it was almost certainly going in the net. That's just the level of reliability you like to have at any level in, in any sport. And yeah, he, he got it done. And so he's a loss, obviously. So Cavarius, to me, that's a loss. And then you look at Edmund Sumner, who all kind of feels the reverse. Like, this isn't really a critique on Edmund as an overall player, more of his fit with his Algiers, because he just feels very replaceable in terms of what we saw from him last season. Like, not great efficiency at all. Uh, not great turnover situation either. Like, by and large, just... I don't think he's going to be a great loss. He'll be fine in Sichuan. Uh, because, you know, I think this, the Chinese uh, association style, you know, asking him to basically, you know, do a lot more ball in hand uh, and, like, take more risks, take more gambles. I think that'll suit him a bit more. And, yeah, I don't think that's one you're going to be complaining about too much, crying too many tears and conus over. Uh, and then lastly, for these, because, again, not, not doing all of them. We're not doing all of them. Because that would, like, you know, that would be a very, very boring video, to be honest. We discussed every in and out. We're discussing the ones I think are important. And lastly, Roland Smiths. So, king of my heart type player. I'm a huge Roland Smiths homer. I mean, he wasn't quite what I hoped for in Zalgiris, but aside from Konus, 
Uh, he's a guy who's been underrated everywhere he goes. And you all know I love Zalgiris. Got the cap there. The reason I never wear it, by the way, is it doesn't fit. I have a huge head. A friend of mine was uh, in Vilnius, oddly, and found the Zalgiris shop. I just told him, buy any snapback uh, Zalgiris you can, uh, and I'll send you the money. He sent it to me, Grant. I didn't think that, you know, oh yeah, there are sizes in snapbacks. And so that's why I never wear the Zalgiris cap. But aside from an Zalgiris jersey, I've always felt Rollins was uh, underrated. He was a little turnover prone last season for Zalgiris, so I suppose that's one aspect to bear in mind also didn't quite score the rate you'd like but still again good efficiency and uh, you know I look at Smolovich is obviously the replacement there in that role and I don't think it's a like for like swap but in terms of where you want to get the production I think it's going to not be too difficult for Alan to sort of give us what uh, Roland gave, Roland's gave I think we could have seen Rowlands give a bit more of a Zalgiris last year, but that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. And so we've discussed who's come in, we've discussed who's come out, who's gone out. Now let's discuss how Zalgiris are actually going to look. So we are back to the notes again. And so, yeah, uh, the look, in a shock to nobody, anybody watching this, or anybody who's watched Zalgiris the last couple of years, the glue to all of this is Edgar Asulinovas. Uh, not even a debate. Uh, you know, he is obviously a very, very high-level EuroLeague player. He's a great basketball player. But when you've got this much roster turnover, much as having a player of that talent on the court is a good thing. That's great. Super, super. What you really want are those intangibles he's going to bring because he is going to be so crucial to everything gelling with all of this changeover, all of this turnaround. Like, you're going to need him to, like, you know, get those guys together, basically be the coach on the floor for Andrea Trinchieri. And, uh, you know, fortunately he is still the guy we thought he was. So I figured, yeah, he's going to do a great job there. He... To me, is you know, he's a he's a player coaches love to have on their roster. Like he's at Karasilanovas, so yeah, of course he's going to be fine. He's going to do a good job there. Uh, Smolagic is a, want to come back to him. He's a big, big role to play uh, because he's going to be doing four on five duty. There are going to be different things he's going to be asked of at different times in the court. So. He's going to be more cerebral. Now, in fairness, he's a pretty cerebral player because he's playing under says the five, but he's going to have to be even more cerebral than he already was. And I think he's going to relish it, though, because he gets to find more ways to contribute, more ways to be a factor. So I think he'll enjoy it, is the short version. And I think y'all and Conus are going to love him. I mean, I think this is going to go really, really good as a relationship. The big, okay, there's one, the dynamic for me, which has the highest ceiling and the lowest floor. Like, we're going out of shot of the camera with this. Francisco and Wallace, that dynamic. Um, it's going to be interesting because in Sylvain Francisco, I think we have the ideal, like what we what you want to have as your primary ball handler, primary guy going out there. Wallace is obviously a change of pace. Uh, he's going to be a bit wilder. You don't want him to get too wild, but you also don't want him to feel he needs to conserve it as too much. It's a balancing act. And then you're in a situation where you're going to have them both on the floor and you're wondering how is that dynamic going to work? How are they going to find a way to mesh what they have together so that it all works like so that to me oof, like it could go beautifully it could be disgusting to watch uh i'm i'm leaning more towards nearer beautiful than disgusting but again woof, 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 woof. this could go so many ways uh so we're gonna see what happens there and there's a whole lot that you know depends on how fired up braz Dacus can be because for me, him at the three, that's so, so important uh, this season. Like, the prodigal son situation can be tough uh, because you've come back and it's like, you know, because you're trying to get bigger contracts. Like, these are people working, trying to raise, make a lot of money so they have a, a nice lives when they stop being professional basketball players and move into other roles which typically don't pay as well as being early grade professional basketball players. Uh, you know, most jobs in the world, basically. Uh, even coaching and in basketball uh, fit that criteria. And yeah, so where Ignis, like I'm looking at this and kind of going, right, he's got a couple of things going here. Most of them, though, are positive. And the, the, obviously, there's the fear you go, well, are people just going to think I'm a big fish in a small pond? For me, I kind of go, I think he's going to come with the attitude of he can earn that next bigger contract than Zalgiris in this trip, not just by being the reliable, great player, you know, good player, good to great, well, great's overused, but very, very good, very reliable. I mean, great in terms of great delivery player and getting it done. Like, he can just be a rehash of what he was previously, or, which is what I'm expecting, 
we can see him try and add a few more dynamics to his game and show Olympiacos what they're really missing and make them regret letting him go, at least in his mind. Like, you know, you always have to chip in your shoulder in basketball. And I think that's what Ignis is going to bring to this. He's going to bring a chip in his shoulder factor. So, just as well, the head coach is Andrea Trinchieri. Because, obviously, he came in in season last year. And it's never ideal uh, for the coach to come in in season. Like, there's naturally a bit of a G-up, a change in vibe, change in atmosphere and all that when a new coach comes in in season. But, like, coaches like preparation time. Uh, you know, they like time to get to know the roster, to get to bring in pieces they want, to get rid of pieces they don't particularly want. And uh, so just to assemble it in the image they want, like, while working, obviously, with the front office and all that as much as they can. Trinquier, you've seen, you know, he is able to get the most out of some very, 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 very different roster lineups over the years. He's had some pretty wildly different teams. And Andrea, like, you know, Bamberg, he wasn't quite able to get them to the situation where he wanted to, but he was very close. At Bayern, he got them pretty much exactly where he wanted to bring them. But in both cases as well, he also knew the value of home court, of making it a hard place to come and get a win. Like Bamberg, he wasn't quite again where he wanted to be in that respect. Bayern, he got there. Uh, he had to figure it out at Bayern. And that wasn't just a talent matter. That was an element of figuring that out, like bringing those fans into it, uh, which is like, going to be hilarious for any German fans reading this. Because Bayern fans are whatever. I can't say swear words in this cause. We'll get demonetized. Yeah, but like the point is, like, make it feel like a it's a it's you know this is an actual road game. Like you're not going to be the Oaxaca Bayern, but you know you you, you can still be your best Bayern. And likewise, Konus, uh, Konus and you know part of that home games last year. Uh, the two of those, you know, it was a case of yeah, great atmospheres, but it wasn't enough to really make people go. Mm. Uh, whereas I think Andrea is going to go right. We got to make this a place where people know you come to our town. It's going to be hard to get the win. Like we're going to use that crowd in our favor. And so, you know, you have him working with guys who are trying to show they're ready for this level, ready to bloom, or ready to prove something after things didn't work out. That's a guy I want on a sideline, basically. Also, just, you'll have to love Andrea Trinchieri, seriously, he's such a character. Uh, oddly, even more so when he's not, you know, uh, annoyed at something on the court. Like, when Andrea Trinchieri is in a good mood, he is an immense character. Like, such a lovely blow to hear talk. Uh, so, yeah, you know, obviously, going to be wishing him the best. But speaking of wishing people the best... What's the outlook? Oh, 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 oh. Zalgiris fans, I'm going to tease you, but I'm still going to give you something. Don't worry. So I'm not going to give you the exact spot I think you're going to land in in the regular season in this video because I'm saving that for the written preview, which is going up in a couple of days. You don't have to wait long, uh, you know, on the main site. But I will give you the ballpark and what that will basically mean in terms of what situation you end up in. Uh, so you got to look at the overall EuroLeague you know, situation this year. you got your power teams like, you know, your POW, your Oli, Fenerbahce have loaded up, Real have loaded up, Monaco are still, you know, loaded to bits. So they're like five teams who I'm putting as a lock-in to be in the re re playoff playoffs, like not play-ins. Like, I'd be very surprised if any of those don't make the playoffs. Like, some of them need more gelling time, looking at you, Real Madrid. Um, but, like, otherwise, there's a lovely, lovely, lovely range of things to like, basically, what we're seeing there. And then you have the teams we... We don't think are going to be causing anybody any headaches. It's a case of you want to be making sure you get both your wins against them or else that season, you know, you're going to be considering those dropped games in the truest sense. That's your Albas, your Asvelt and your Paris basketballs. I would have been a bit higher on Paris basketball than I am if they hadn't changed coach because I thought, uh, you know, that was a really crucial part for them. I commentated on them. Uh, it went on them, sorry. I commentated on the Bond team that was basically the... Uh, the, the, suppose the, uh, the genesis of that Paris team in terms of the players that were brought over when they won the BCL and I thought they were great to watch and really well coached and really well disciplined so under a different coaching setup like even with a lot of the same core guys and some new players in I'm not that high on Paris uh, you know Diego Splitter's cool don't get me wrong I just don't know what he's going to be like on a coach at this level it's an enormous ask so yeah there's that so there you're like eight teams where we've got certain things associated with them and that leaves a batch about ten teams for what I'm saying are five spots, like one automatic playoff for the play-ins. I look at Zalgiris and I go, well, they're obviously in the debate, uh, you know, no question, uh, just to be clear. They, they, you know, are they in the debate for sixth? Barely, not really though, like, you know, but like they aren't gone from it in my book. Like a, a lot of it depends on how bantery Barcelona go. If Barcelona go full banter, 
there's going to be such a bloody battle for that six spot. Uh, there's going to be several teams in the race for it. Because uh, six, to me, is the most valuable place in Euro League uh, in terms of the regular season. Because it doesn't get you home court, fair enough. Like, sixth and fourth are probably, you know, interchangeable in that. Because at least fourth, you get home court. But, like, six means you're avoiding the play-ins. And you're in still a win, uh, uh, not a, I won't say winnable playoff series because none of them are unwinnable, but a playoff series where you won't be sort of you know, why considerably underdogs like you'd be considered reasonably well matched. So it's like six seed, that's a good seed to get. So then you got the seven to ten spots, which are the ones that really really matter in this. And right now, I'm not going to say which of them it has. I do have Zalgiris on the inside, which is obviously an improvement on last season. I look at sort of all the rosters around. And there's so many of them there, you know, you've got your FS, your Partisans, uh, Bologna, Zvezda, uh, like a bunch of them, I'm just, you know, I'm debating in my head where they're going to land at the moment uh, for my uh, previews. And yeah, yeah, it's like, I put, look at Zelgiris and I go, there's enough here to get to, you know, I would say 19, but I think it'll be, a, it might even be 20 wins needed to get top 10 this year, but probably not. Actually, she was on 23 for second last year, no. So I'm going to say, uh, what, 34 games? Yeah, well, hang on, 19, I was doing the divide away. I was cutting 38 and a half there, and 34, 34. So what? So 17 wins is 500, right? Uh, I think 18 is the bare minimum, and 19 you're in, uh, basically. So 19 might be needed to get top 10, uh, but I think 19 you're definitely in. I think there are there is a way with this roster to get to 19 wins. The question is, is there a way to get to 20 or 21 or even 22, you know? And that's where it gets a lot harder because obviously it gets a lot tighter. Uh, the margins get a lot finer. And so, sorry, hard to cut there because I had to cough. Uh, so right now I'm saying yes, play-ins. Uh, I'm saying maybe to good chances of the the nicer play-in situation of being 7-8. And... Not a great, but not implausible chance of automatic playoff seed in sixth. That's what I would say. Uh, so very confident uh, inside the top ten. Not so confident, but not completely surprised if it happens in a 7-8 slot. Fairly surprised, but wouldn't be like blown away if it's sixth. So that's my very long, drawn out, and hopefully actually recorded this time, video on Zalgiris. And remember, I've done quite a few Zalgiris videos lately, so before I wrap up and tell you a couple of quick stories on the way out, uh, the, oh, over there, or possibly over there, I always forget which side it is, like, you know, mirrors and stuff, people. Uh, we have the link to the playlist for all our videos on the Zalgiris Tessonet London Lion Saga. It was quite a run covering it, so watch through all those. You'll have lots of content, and obviously you'll have lots of Zalgiris content during the season, both here and on the main site but so uh two stories one about this cap and one about conus uh because i do want to get to conus this year so i'm going to start with that i have been to conus and this is the awkward thing with me now some of you in the comments noticed already but i was i did fly over early in fact uh a couple of uh, a couple of days earlier than most journalists for the 2023 final four unfortunately i had to come home early as well because uh got word literally my first evening there my dad uh had taken quite a turn illness wise and to get my butt back to dublin uh because we were you know end of day situation and we unfortunately lost him he passed uh, great age he was 88 you know missing the bits uh but um yeah uh you know so but i kind of go that's been my one trip to conus and i you know Listen, we're going to make this up. So this year, I have no idea who I am yet because I'm doing a lot of commentary this year, mostly on volleyball of all things, not so much in basketball. Although I have done a lot of basketball commentary in the past and we'll still be doing some, which we'll come back to this cap on uh, shortly. Uh, but um, yeah, so I want to go over. I'm going to come over. I don't know when. Like, feel free to suggest a game I should come to in the comments. I'll see what I can pull off. Because, again, part of it is work-related. Because I'm self-employed, which is great. I'm self-employed, which means I can't really say no to that much work. Uh, so, because rent and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, suggest games you would like to see me and Conus for. But the bigger one I might suggest in the comments, if you're still watching, and this is a long video, I've gone long for you, Zalgiris, uh, is I want you to suggest places for me to drink in Conus if I come to visit for a game, when I come to visit for a game this season. Suggest summer for me to uh, come visit and have a beer while I'm in Kaunas, okay? Uh, that would be big to me. So finishing off with the cap, uh, and so this is Sport TG Cahar. Uh, TG Cahar is uh, our Irish language broadcaster here in Ireland, and they are the home of Irish basketball. I know this because I've been doing the coverage in Irish, Osquail, as we say, uh, for about a decade now. Wow, that's actually a long time I've been doing this with TG Car now that I think about it. It's close to a decade I'm doing games with them. And I love it. It's great. Uh, you know, it's the only broadcast basketball we have in Ireland outside of the Olympics, where Timmy McCarthy, Mr. Downtown, is there. 
but uh, I also have, I happened to do a game for them recently in another sport entirely, American football. We had Georgia Tech play Florida State, college football game here in Dublin, 50-odd thousand people at it, crazy, atmosphere, fantastic. And I was in the broadcast that was again in Irish discussing American football, and I met the head of sport at the broadcast, I, said, I saw I was wearing one of these, Ronan. Send me one of those, will you? And he was lovely. He sent me a cap and a couple of uh, coffee uh, mugs, disposable, well, not disposable, sorry, portable reusables. So that was lovely. So yeah, that's a couple of little yar yarns for you all at the end. And uh, on that, the battery is literally running out. So listen, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps. And I will see you next time.